Hey guys, it's Alicia with Young Corn Mom Crafts. Um, it was requested that um, I give you guys this pattern. It was created um, in my head and I don't know how to write a pattern. So um, what I'm going to do is I guess up here I will put um, as I'm going along showing you how to make this um, um, what I'm calling the toilet paper scarf. Um, yeah, so as we go along I will show you how to do this. Um, Um, but anyway, so I will show you guys what you will need to make this. It does take some time to do it up. Um, and what I've been doing is, um, I've got it posted actually at the Facebook Marketplace as uh, $25 a piece because it takes a while to make. Um, but if you supply your own toilet paper roll, I will knock $5 off. <laughs> but uh, Lord knows there's a lot of people out there that have these now as we've all seen in the supermarkets and the stores um but anyway so let me show you it's it actually is is a scarf it's just it's oh my i have my kitty cat jump up on my table sorry about that um it actually is a scarf so i will show you i just put a ribbon around it and untie it show you what it looks like so so this is what you would be making you obviously can't use this for toilet paper because number one it's not paper um, I, and I do recommend using 100% acrylic on it but yeah so it is let's see it's just just it's not attached um, like I said it, it's gonna be a perfect um, 2020 Christmas gift um, or maybe a birthday present um, a conversation piece a novelty that type thing but anyway it is four and a half inches wide and it's 66 inches long. You can make it longer if you want, but it's just long enough that you can cinch it around. And it's perfect. And you can use any kind of yarn if you want to. Um, this is just the regular, let's see, this one I used, um, for this scarf I used Karen's Pound of Love baby yarn. Yeah. So I used a 4.5 millimeter hook for this. And I did it all in single crochet. And this is half doubles. Uh, but the way that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to stitch it up quicker. Because you're going to do it with um, a 5.5 millimeter hook. Or rather a H hook. H? Is it H? I. Ah. You can use an H or an I hook, and we're going to do half double crochets. You're not going to do any single crochets in this one. Um, I will, in the beginning of the video, I will show you how to do it this way, if you want more of a solid piece, and then I'll show you what it looks like with the half double. So, what you're going to need is, you're going to need your hook. This one, like I said, this one is a, this one is a 5.0. Between a 4.5 and a 5.5, whatever your yarn is comfortable with. And I apologize, my nail polish is grody. <laughs> I am going to be using pink yarn in this tutorial, um, but it is a four ply worsted weight that I'll be using, which is why I'm using a bigger needle as well. Uh, but any, I mean, I, this was gifted to me with a big bolster, so I thought this would be perfect for it. You are going to need an empty toilet paper roll to wind it up on. And a piece of ribbon to tie it up with just like I showed you in the beginning you're going to need a pair of scissors obviously I recommend a stitch marker unless you plan on let's see stitch markers I recommend a stitch marker um, unless you plan on making it all at once so that it doesn't unravel because you will be counting rows because each square before you come to the division of each square is a certain amount of rows and you are going to need a needle threader. If you don't have a needle threader, um, what you can do is you take a piece of paper. And I do not have one handy. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I will tear this off. There you go. You can take a piece of paper. And then you take your thread or your string. This is actually one of the easiest ways. If you'll take your, take it and lay it. 
thing in the middle, right, like this. And you can thread it. Let me get a darning needle because you're going to need to tuck in your ends. You're going to want a darning, let's see, a darning needle or something with a big eye. Let's see if I get that. Yeah. But anyway, so what you could do is you can take the piece of and you can slide it through. Well, if it was thinner, you just do it with one one square. I've got too much paper. Let me let me take that out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna snip it. Little piece of paper. Your thread or your string. And you take it. Well, we can do it from this end, bend it in half. And you can slide it through. And there you go. That's one way to do it. Or you can get one of these handy dandy needle threaders. Um, I'm going to have these up at my Etsy shop. I keep saying that and I haven't put them up there yet. Uh, but you can, if not, you can get them. How you do it is you put your needle on there like this. You hook your string like this and you slide it like that. So much easier. But, like I said, the little little tiny piece of paper works as well. Um, you can get these. I think Hobby Lobby's got them for like $2.99, I think. I think so. I'm going to have them in my shop for $1.50 with 50 cents shipping. Because I'm going to ship them in envelopes. But they will be wrapped. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. That's not why you're here. You are here because you want to learn how to do this. Um, and then once you adapt it, you can, you know, twist around, do it any way you want. Um, I actually had this idea for quite a while now, and but when all this stuff started happening and people going crazy about buying up all the toilet paper, I thought this would be ideal. It's something to help lighten a very serious situation. Um, it keeps you busy while, say for instance, you're quarantining, you're trapped inside your home and you can't get out. It's going to keep you busy and help you, um, help you cope, relax, um, start your Christmas making early. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and get started. All right, guys, to get started, like I said, you're going to need between a 4.5 or a 5.5 millimeter hook, depending on um, what size yarn you use. You're going to need a pair of snips or scissors, and you're going to need some way of threading your needle, um, because we, this day and age, you don't want to lick it, of course. You're going to need some stitch markers, unless you want to complete the project in one sitting you're going to need some type of um, needle to tuck in your ends and of course you're going to need a toilet paper roll you can also use paper towel rolls just cut it in half either way will work something to wrap your scarf around and of course this is what it's going to look like when you're done. My business card. I went ahead and attached it to my ribbon. Um, and ribbon is optional. It's up to you. I went ahead and put a ribbon on it because I thought, let me zoom out a little bit. Let's see if I can zoom out. No, it won't let me. Um, I just thought a ribbon was, you know, a cute little touch for it. So anyway, so that's, that's an option that you can use. So to get started, you're going to need some type of four ply worsted weight acrylic yarn. You can actually use any type of yarn, really. Um, if you're wanting it more novel to make it look like what you want it to look like of course that's what you want it to be um look like a toilet paper roll then of course you want to use um an acrylic yarn you don't want to go too bulky you don't want to go too thin all right so to get started just leave yourself maybe a two or three inch tail because we're going to tuck that in you're going to do yourself a slip knot And these are just ba basic stitches for those of you who know how to do your basic stitches. Um, that's what this is for. Okay, so first off, I thread my needle. I thread my hand off different. Um, you're going to chain to where you have four, your gauge is four and a half inches. So you're going to, uh, for this, for the four ply acrylic, like if you're using a Red Heart Super Saver, you're going to chain...
19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now, if you have a ruler, you want to check your gauge. This is four and a half inches. You can see on here. I can't let's see if I can see it back. There we go. You can see it's four and a half inches. That's what you want. Now you want to be stitching in rows of 18 because you're going to cut that in half when you do your split and I'll show you that in a minute. So what you're going to do is you have 19 on here. You're going to skip that first stitch and I'm sorry, you, you do 20. I apologize. I was used to doing it the single crochet way. If you're going to do a single crochet to make it more compact, you want to do 19, skip one, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and single crochet all the way across. You want a total of 18 stitches. We're going to do half double crochets for this one. So we did our 18 plus chain 2. You're going to do a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three, wrap your yarn around, go in the hole, wrap your yarn around, pull it through, wrap your yarn around, and pull through all three stitches. And there's your half double crochet. Again, wrap, go through the hole, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through all three. Now that is your half double crochet. So there's two half double crochets. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, go a little bit quicker. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Uh, don't be alarmed that your work will curl at first, but it will flatten itself out. Okay, now that you've got your 18 stitches, you're going to just chain one. Normally when you're working with a half double crochet, you would chain two in turn. But with this, because we want it to be flat on the end, you're going to just chain one. And then you're going to turn your work once you do your chain one. You're going to wrap. And in that first stitch, you're going to do a half double crochet. And you're going to do, whoops, my yarn wants to split. You're going to do half double crochet all the way across. You should have 18 stitches all the way across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the camera here. And I'm going to do my 18 stitches all the way across so you guys won't hear me counting. And I will meet you back. Or at end. the end, You, I'm about to do my 18th stitch on the end. Of my half double crochet. Chain one and turn. You're going to do that for a total. We've got two rows already made. You're going to do that for a total of 14 rows. Okay? So once you do that and you have your 14 rows, I will meet you back at row number 15. Okay. So I went ahead and did another one to show you what it's going to look like. So when we get done, this is the perforation of what it's going to look like. And this is what you should have. Okay? This is 14 rows. Now, when you get to the end of your... We're doing this part right here. When you get to the 14th row, I'm going to do my last... Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do my last... There we go. Sorry. I'm going to do my last half double crochet. Now, when you get to the end of your 14th row, to do your 15th row, you're going to chain three. One, two, three. 
you're going to turn your work. Okay. Now normally you would go in this stitch right here. You're going to skip this stitch. You're going to go into the second stitch from the end. Skip, second stitch, you're going to do a half double crochet. Then chain one. Skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, do a half double crochet, chain one. Let's zoom in a little bit. And that's what you're going to do all the way across. Skip, half double crochet, chain one. Skip, half double crochet chain one and do all that do that all the way across skip half double crochet chain one skip half double crochet chain one skip half double crochet chain one skip half double crochet Oops. chain one skip and you're going to do half double crochet in the last stitch on the end chain one, turn your work over, and you will now start your next, quote, let me get it back out, sorry, <laughs> you'll start your next quote unquote sheet. Alright guys, we are at the end of our 15th row, skip one, half double crochet in the end, at this point, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and for row 16, you're going to work in between those chain one spaces. So, you're going to do two half double crochets in the first chain one space. So, wrap your yarn, half double crochet one, half double crochet two. You're going to skip to the next chain one space and do ha two half double crochets. Skip two half double crochets. Oops. One. Chain one space, two half double crochets. Chain one space again, two half double crochets. And you're going to do that all the way across. My yarn got tight. There we go. And then in the last one, you got to kind of fiddle with it a little bit to open it up because it is that chain three. So you're going to do your half double crochet twice, chain one, turn your work, and now you are working on a new square, sheet, whatever you want to call it. Now, if you think that your squares are too long, you can shorten them to 12. Um, I'm using a size 3, I think it's a size 3 DK weight right now for the, the Karen uh, cotton cakes. The, the yarn is thinner than the yarn that I'm using here today, like the um, Super Saver. So you can count, you can kind of see the ridges. This is two rows. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And with the other one, I'm only doing twelve. So if you want to cut it off at twelve and make them a little bit shorter, you can. And I'm finding that when on the other one, I'm doing about thirteen squares. So if you want to count each sheet as a square, there's one, there's two, and then you'll do 13 if you want to gauge it. Otherwise, it's going to be between 66 and 68 inches, however long you want it. Um, I gauged it at 66. I measured the, lat, the white one at 66 inches, and it is four and a half inches across, like I said. Now, at this point, to start your next sheet, of course, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to do a half double crochet into each stitch all the way across, and that's your repeat. So again, at the beginning, I'm going to recap. You're going to chain 20. You're going to 
do a half double crochet in the third chain from the stitch. You're going to do half double crochet all the way across for a total of 18 stitches. You're going to chain one, turn your work, half double crochet all the way across, and repeat that for 14 rows. On your 15th row, you're going to chain three, skip one, half double crochet, chain one, skip one, half double crochet, chain one, skip one, repeat that all the way to the end. You're going to chain one, turn your work, two double crochet in the space, two double crochet in the space, two double crochet in the space, all the way across for a total of 18 stitches, chain one, and then half double crochet in each stitch across, again, 18 stitches. And you're going to repeat that, like I said, until you have a total of 18 squares. Let me see if I can go, go out. But anyway, so yeah, so there you have it. That is your toilet paper roll. I had to refilm this part of it because I had forgotten to give you guys instructions for row 17 to get started on a new row. So we're going to continue now. So continuously... It's going to look like this. You're going to do the half double crochet, chain one skip, half double crochet, chain one skip. Then you're going to do 14 more rows of half double crochet. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way to the end until you have 66 inches. Then you're going to take it. You're going to Hide your tail, which I will do right now, and I would recommend doing this early anyway, because that way, let me zoom in so you guys can see how I hide my tail. Everybody hides it a little bit different, I think. Um, what I do is I will weave it back and forth a few times. And then I will come back through and I use a sharp needle because so that I can pierce the thread so it's less likely to come through. So what I'll do is I'll go all the way to the end, pull it to where it's not too tight, and then I'll come back on the end and pierce through about, about eight or nine more stitches and pull it through. Make sure that it's even. Cut the tail. And there you have it. That's going to be your end. Go back out. That's going to be your end. And like I said, you just make it as long as you want. And then you're going to take your roll. You're going to put it, just hold it up against it, and then just roll it on itself. And then once you do that, it's going to look like this. Now, the difference between this and this, if you see the difference in the stitch, for this one, instead of doing a half double crochet, I did a single crochet. And I did 16 rows of single crochet. And then... I did the same perforation as I did for this one. The perforation is the same. I did the chain three, skip one, half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, skip one, chain one, and so on. I did that all the way across. So I will make sure that I put in here up at the top um, all the different stitches when I go to edit this video for you guys. But if you want the tighter stitch, do the single crochet. If you want the the softer, looser stitch, do the half double crochet. I wouldn't recommend doing a double crochet or anything bigger because then you're not going to get that look that you want um, for the, um, the gift, so to speak. But anyway, so that's, that's it. Um, now on this one, because I did my stitches loose, more loose, <coughs> excuse me, it's not going to be my toilet paper roll is not going to look the same. But on this one, it was more flush. And if you're not sure how you want to do that, and like I said, if you're using a different gauge, because with this, I did use a, a 4.5 millimeter hook. With this one, I used a 5. 
millimeter hook. Um, in other words, I used a G for this one and H for this one. So what you could do is instead of the 18 stitches, you want it to be an even number. So you could probably do 16 and make it shorter if you want. But if you want like a nice scarf effect, I would recommend doing the 18 and then wrap it around the roll. You could also adapt your roll to make it to where it's more flush by using a paper towel roll. <coughs> Excuse me. Use a paper towel roll and then that way you can cut it to the size of the length that you want your scarf. I would not go any bigger than 18 across only because it, it would look kind of distorted. I don't think it would look as good. So there you have it. That's what you have to do. Um, I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys watching. Um, let me come back to, to figure out how the to other direction. Put the camera back on because I've got it at an odd angle. And normally when I feel back back here in the craft room, um, it is daylight, and I'm having to use my odd light, and it's kind of the glare is kind of bright in my eyes. But then you can't see me very well if I do it this way. But anyway, so there we go. I'll put the odd light back. Let's see if I could do it this way. See if that's going to make a difference. Oh, no, see, now that makes it a little bit better. Okay, so anyway. So, yeah, that's what you have to do if you were interested in making this scarf. Um, this is the finished product. And what I did was just, like I said, I just tied a ribbon around it. Um, you want to wrap the ribbon around three times in order to get the measurement. And then what I did was I just tucked the ribbon underneath the ribbon in the hole. Let's see. Stuck it in the hole. And then present it that way. I have my little handy dandy homemade gift tag on there. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited. I think it turned out really good. So anyway, so thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you're new to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a video every Sunday. This was just a, a little extra bonus that I put out there because people were interested in getting this pattern. Um, not that it's written and I apologize. Um, I guess you could just write down. I wrote it down as I went. I don't know. I'm not used to writing a pattern. But anyway, so um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Um, give me your ideas if you're interested in any other tutorials or if um, you want to see something different on my tutorials. Um, I'm fairly new to them. I think this is only maybe the third or fourth one I've ever made. I did make a, two cross stitch tutorials on how to create your own cross stitch pattern. You can go check that out. Um, it was supposed to be one of three, two of three, and three of three, but I think I should have renamed it. I think I'm going to rename them something different because it's just different methods on how you can create your own cross stitch pattern. As far as crochet patterns. Um, I kind of wing it when I'm creating my own um, and sometimes I'll jot it down so that I don't forget or I will do it several times like with this. Like I've got this going on. Um, this is my finished one and I happen to write this one down because I thought that would be so novel and I know I'm going to end up making a ton of these. Um, and then this one will be one that is finished and right now I'm in the middle of making one with a, a Karen cake. It's Karen cotton cake. Um, I think it's like 80% acrylic, 20%, no, no, 80% cotton, or maybe it's 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. Yes, it's really soft. I love working with that one. That one I am doing with a 4.5 millimeter hook. But you want to just judge your, your sheets however you want them to be square. Um, and how I measure to them to be square is if you'll take it the corner and you'll do like this. And if it makes a perfect triangle, you know that you've got your square the way you want it. So it is a total square for your sheet of toilet paper. But anyway, <laughs> so that's it. Like I said, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. And I put content every Sunday, sometimes bonuses. We have content, not contests. I have giveaways every week. Um, right now I've got a yarn giveaway going on and a drawing will be April 1st and I've got a cross stitch book uh, giveaway going on and I will link that below if you're interested in entering that. Um, the rules are in the video and I give more detail about what the prizes are this month. Um, usually I will 
put them up between the 20th and the 25th, and then I have the drawing on the 16th or 17th of each month. But because of everything that's been going on, um, I did it a little different, and this one, the drawing is going to be on April 1st. Um, it, it's not an April Fool's day. It's 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 for real. So. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Madsen's in the next room, and I've got to go video my daily vlog that I do for my Raw channel, uh, but that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I will see you next week. Peace out.